Hello, this is Stampy Longnose, and today I'm bringing you some multiplayer gameplay on Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, this is the Xbox Live Arcade version of Duke Nukem 3D, and uh, I'm not going to talk about the game as a whole too much, basically because I already have in another video. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description, or you can click on the screen now. If you want to see a video I made a while ago with me and my friend Crimson Azov, basically playing for a bit of the co-op single play and we talk about the game in general. Uh, but something we don't talk about that much is the multiplayer, which is something which is actually kind of noteworthy. I mean, looking at it now, you might think, yeah, it's just kind of an add-on gimmick and like it doesn't really matter today. I mean, it, okay, it isn't a Call of Duty game, it, it is an old retro game. But if you take it for what it is, you can actually have some fun. Because there's an achievement for getting about 500 kills online. So I was like, oh, I'll play the game and get the achievement. And I've gone on to get about 2,000 kills online after that. So it was good enough to carry on playing anyway, even without the incentive of achievements. Uh, the gameplay is kind of crazy. It kind of does feel like a PC game, simply because of how fast it is. You see, you absolutely zoom around the map. And it's quite similar to games like Quake games and uh, maybe Unreal Tournament games as well. There's a lot of it to do with uh, what they call in a professional gaming your stack, which is basically your amount of health and your armor and the weapons you have. A lot of the game is about moving around the map really quickly, trying to build up all your health, get all your ammo up, get lots of armor. So when you do get to a fight, you got to uh, you have a much better chance of winning. I mean, it does come down to aim as well, but it's much more about the way you move around the map and where you go, rather than simply like you turn around a corner, who shoot first is going to win because you have a lot of health. If you're just using a pistol or something, it takes a long time to kill someone. So you really want to be going getting a gun like a rocket launcher and that. And this is uh, some other levels where uh, you can shrink them and step on them, which is a really good way to beat them. If someone's got 200 health and 10 armor, if you shrink them down and they just stand on their body, then uh, you're going to get the kill. Yes, this is me playing with a few people that I know and one randomer. Finding games is very difficult. And I mean, this game is quite old. This is probably about half a year old, this gameplay. Uh, you can actually save the games in a theater mode. It does have full theater mode, which is kind of brilliant for a uh, game like this. And because if you're playing it on campaign, if you die, you can just, uh, you don't respawn, you can just rewind time to like back to a point where you want to carry on for. So a lot of the times in games like this, you're having a level, you have only 10 health and you kind of just get stuck in an area. And if you get a checkpoint there, every time you die, you come back and you know, really rubbish situation. So you can kind of rewind it to the bit where you muck up. And by the way, I killed that guy by shooting a fire hydrant, which was of course completely on purpose. Yeah, but that's not in a co-op though, in a co-op when you're playing it you do simply just respawn. Uh, if you are thinking about getting this game for the multiplayer, do bear in mind that it can be difficult to play a game. I haven't played it recently, so I can't tell you uh, what it is like. So if you are thinking of getting it, I do recommend getting like some friends to download it as well. That's basically what, what I did. I mean, I, I played this game ages ago because it was actually out on the Mac. It was one of the first games that I played on the Mac. And then like uh, I downloaded it as soon as it came out on Xbox Live. I tried playing online and I was sort of getting a lot of 1v1 games which can end up quite slow, a lot of just looking for the other players. So I forced all my friends to download it as well so I could have people to play with. And uh, since then we carry on and play it regularly, quite regularly at first, not so much now. But yeah, uh, if you want some tips if playing it on multiplayer, not sure if you would. As I said earlier, I recommend learning the maps. You can, you can do it because the same maps are from single player and multiplayer. So if you want to learn the maps, just kill like all of the enemies on single player. Instead of going to the exit, look for all the secrets, look for all the places to go. And uh, I mean, there's guides on the internet as well if you want to find all the secrets, because a lot of the secret areas is where you're going to get all the stuff. Because all the gun placement and everything, that is simply how it's taken from the campaign. There's no specifically designed multiplayer maps. Actually, I think there is one. I think there is one level. I don't know if it was added in just for this, uh, this game. But there is one which is designed for multiplayer, but it's probably one of the worst levels to play anyway. It's one that uh, not very many people do. Uh, but yeah, uh, the shotgun is uh, what you'll see most really good players using. And uh, there's a kind of a tactic that they do where they sort of jump and crouch and sort of to get their aim on. But the way the aiming works in this game, although you can look up and down, with a gun like the shotgun, it doesn't take into consideration the different planes. 
So there could be someone high up in the air jet plucking around. As long as you're you hit them horizontally right, it doesn't matter if they're above you, you will still hit them. I mean that's not the same with all of the guns, I think that's the same for the Ripper as well. Of course the rocket launcher you still do have to aim up and down. And so you see a lot in this game I try jet packing around and shooting down with the rocket launcher, which actually doesn't work as well as you might think. One because of how quickly they move and if they're moving unpredictably it can be quite hard to hit them. Rocket launchers kind of better in more of an enclosed place, uh, an enclosed space we can sort of bounce off the walls. And also when you look down the kind of the skewl looks all weird. It's a bit of a strange perspective because it's not properly 3D this game. I mean although it's got 3D in the name, although most of the levels are 3D, it kind of it's all 2D planes all sort of manipulated to make it look like proper 3D. And I mean don't get me wrong, I mean this game looked amazing when it came out, but uh I don't know how well it's held up. So yeah, I mean, give it a go. Of course, it's on uh, Xbox Live Arcade. You can download the trial. I don't actually know if it is on the PSN store. I should probably look that up. I'll, I'll write on your on the bottom of the screen coming up now. It will be saying whether it is on PSN store or whatever. I'll look it up after this video. Uh, and also, Duke Nukem Forever is coming out in a few days. If it's not out already, I'm making this video. This is why I decided to bring this. So we'll go a bit old school looking at the history of Duke Nukem. Uh, I'm not particularly looking forward to it. I mean, I'm definitely not going to buy it on release. Uh, I don't think it will be that amazing. I mean, I don't know. I mean, look look at reviews. I mean, I'm doing this commentary before the game comes out. I mean, there's a good chance it's already out by the time you're watching this. But I don't know. I think it would. I think I would have fun playing through it. But it's not. I mean, when you look at the games that are set to come out, like you look at a game like Battlefield 3 or something, then look at some Duke Nukem gameplay. It's kind of hard to justify buying it to be honest. So I'm, I'm kind of worried about how they've done it. One, because of how long they've spent making it. Like it's going to be kind of behind the times a bit. Because I mean there's um, 3D, War 3D Realms who made this Duke Nukem, the creator of the Duke Nukem franchise. They were making it for a long 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 time. And then like I think a few other different companies sort of took it over and started working it. And now it's uh, was it Gearbox Software, I think, the people who did Borderlands. I think they're working on it now, but because they started making the game so long ago, like it's going to be all based on old technology, so the graphics won't be that good and won't have that good game physics. And also now <clears throat> another company taking over. I don't know if they're going to be trying to be like too nostalgic to like the point where it holds them back. So I often find when you get these really big franchises and then they'll make they'll have about a trilogy come out, or they'll have three games that will come out in quick succession, and they'll, they'll be each one will take it that bit further. And then there's then there's like a gap, like a ten year gap or something, and then they bring back the franchise. It's really hard to to be innovative because all of the fans of the old games are gonna be like, oh no 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 no, like you can't change it, you can't do it like this, this is how it used to be, like that's why we like it. But then it's kind of difficult for them to add too much new or to change it that much because they're going to annoy the old fans, which kind of holds the games back, I think, a bit. I think when they make the sequel straight after, they're just looking to make it better. They're not worried about keeping it the same as the first one as much because it's kind of going to happen anyway. So I'm a bit worried that they're going to be aiming for the old school gameplay too much to the point where it could have been more fun if they kind of brought it up to speed a bit. Although, from what I've seen so far of the game, it kind of seems like they haven't done that. They have been borrowing some ideas from newer games, maybe like to a bad extent. Like the fact that you can only carry two guns in Duke Nukem Forever, which is something that, like, I think why? Why limit? I mean, you're having all these guns, like guns where you can freeze people, these the, the string ray guns come back. Like, I think let you have them all, let you have fun. I mean, the whole thing about the game is just having fun. There's no in-depth storyline, no character development or anything going on, it's having crazy fun, why limit it to just having two guns, there's, there's no need for it, so that's not a, <laughs> not a good thing in my opinion. Also it's got regenerative health, which I've heard some people complaining about going, oh, like, oh, they're just trying to be Duke Nukem Call of Duty or whatever, but I think that's fine, I like regenerative health, or health, it makes sense, especially on multiplayer, just because if you're get in a gunfight and then you've only got five health left or whatever, then you go and fight someone else, then you're going to be at a disadvantage, I don't really like that. Although it's not called health in Duke Nukem Forever, it's called Ego, but it, it is just health, it's just it says Ego instead of it, which is kind of fitting with uh, Duke Nukem. 
But it is kind of different to health, I suppose, because if you do a duke-like activity, which is like um, kicking the head off someone, doing something badass, basically, then uh, it fills up a little bit more, like quicker, so you don't have to wait wait for it to just fill up like a normal uh, health bar. Anyway, I'm going to do something kind of controversial for a game take, uh, gameplay commentary, uh, and I'm going to shut up. And I'm going to let you just watch the end of this game uh, without me speaking, just so you can hear what the game sounds like. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you later.